What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening, everybody? How is everybody doing? I hope that everybody is doing well. It is Saturday morning here. It is Friday night. If you are on the East Coast or anywhere in America, um, Saturday here, Friday night. Where you at? Um, tonight, man. Um, well, you're tonight. My my today. Um, we're gonna have a um, a candid conversation with. Um, Marie from Life in Haiti. Um, I'm heading back to the Dominican Republic. Um, so there are a couple of things that I want to, uh, some housekeeping stuff I need to get done while I'm in DR. We're going to discuss all that tonight. So tonight, um, um, we're going to have some some conversation, uh, some serious conversation. Um, also, um, well, Let's get into the show and uh, we can get into everything else that I would like uh, to discuss. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and start, baby. Let's do it. And my theme supposed to came up. Hmm. Technical difficulties already. Yeah, I'm gonna get Baz to redo my my theme song for Thailand. Tell him they dreams ain't your everyday general uh, salute. Uh, call him Frank and Beverly. No matter where you are, find a better space. Live your best life, ain't a dream, cause it's telling me. No matter where you are, sip the champagne. I've been around the world, it's a crap game. So shake em up, shake em up, shake em. Tailor made dreams, TV out the matrix. No matter where you are. Where you are, where you are, where you are, where you are, where you are baby. Champagne, you know, I was thinking. I need a good theme song. Tell him made out the DR. Hey, look, hey. Adios, mommy, see ya. Adios. General off in Pattaya. Tire. Salute, baby, I'm retired. Arr. I'm in the land of the smiles. My baby, I'm clean, fines. A cutting up. Tell him make dreams. My theme, champagne, caviar. Button up, button up. Tell him make dreams, TV. I'm in Tyler. 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 I'm in Thailand. What's happening, y'all? Mr. Taylor. Taylor made dreams. I'm in Thailand. Yes, I am in Thailand, but I will be pulling up, pulling out shortly, very shortly, very shortly. I don't want to say the exact day and time. Um, that does not mean I'm not returning because I still have a year lease on my condo. But I need to go to DR, take care of some things. Um, I was talking to Miss Marie earlier. Um, Y'all know from life in Haiti. And uh, my sister, she, she did a video and caught a little, just a little bit of heat. Uh, you know, speaking her truth. And so we're going to set that record straight. You know, uh, I love Miss Marie. Um, uh, I think she's quite honest, quite candid. The first time that I, I met her, um, she was very open about her situation, um, the stuff that she had went through. Um, and, and I mean, it was, it was, it was, um, it, it was, a uh, a, a real just heart to heart conversation, man. And, and I love her, you know, um, she, she went into YouTube space, man, and she's been in, in Haiti doing her thing. And thank God for her, man. She's helped out a lot of people. And uh, a lot of times when you help people, man, um, and I've learned myself, you know, people, um, the people that you help the most is one sometimes uh, uh, a stab you in the back. So um, let's go into um, the conversation. So, yes, I'm leaving um, Thailand. I got to head to DR. I got to take care of some business um, to be quite candid. Um, you know, I got my daughter down there, so I want to go down there, make sure she's okay, check on her. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, before I left, I mean, you know, like the moms wanted to do this crazy Houdini act with my child. So, you know, I was trying to be nice and work stuff out. And now I just got to go file some paperwork, man, that, you know, that, you know, to do all that. 
um, to make sure that everything is is right with my daughter, visitations, all that good stuff. You know, you got to do what you got to do. I was hoping that, you know, uh, we could work it out um, with each other, but that seems not to be the direction that somebody else wants to go. And when, you, and when you're trying to meet somebody halfway and they don't want to meet you halfway, then, you know, you have to go the other route. Either way, um, you know, I, I love my daughter dearly, and there's nothing in this world that would prevent me from um, not being a part of her life. That's just, that's a non-starter right there. Um, also, my brother just moved to DR, so I got to take care of stuff down there with him. Um, I'll be setting up the Airbnb for the condo. I'm about to, um, you know, um, I'm trying to, I brought some land prior to me leaving DR and um, got to go finish closing that deal. I'm trying to buy another piece right next to mine. Um, and uh, so, man, you know, it's just a lot to do. Take care while I'm in DR. I know a lot of y'all see me with these shades on, like, man, why are you sitting in your crib with your shades on? Um, I broke my glasses the other day uh, I, and I talked about it on my other vlog, you know broke that thing and uh, so these are the only prescription glasses my shades that i have so my other one should be ready on monday uh, so i'll be back into some regular glasses but until then these are my only prescription glasses man uh miss marie is in the background so we're going to bring her up in a second also 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 um i'm going to be asking for some assistance um so we have our first um, kid, our first child, first baby from the orphanage, getting ready to go to college, Jennifer. I can say her name because she's 18 now. And uh, I want to go down there and make sure we celebrate her. Um, she wants to be an architect. I'll be, actually be able to bring her on camera because she's not a child anymore with the orphanage because I want people to actually see her. Um, college for her is like $5,000 a year. And I started, I was doing a campaign um, last year to make sure we have the $5,000 ready for her to go this year. But the orphanage said that she had a benefactor. Somebody came through, knew, knew her story, knew what we was trying to do and said, don't worry about it. I got it. So I backed out and I just kept uh, continuing to, you know, support the, the orphanage with food, um, toiletries, yada, 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 yada. Um, but now it appears that person has backed out. Um, so I told the orphanage, I got a call from um, the administrator and she was asking, could we help? And I was like, listen, don't worry about it. Um, we're going to make sure that she goes to college and I'm going to hopefully interview Jennifer. So y'all could see the, the beautiful person that she is, um, working with the orphanage right now. Um, like I said, another great thing. Um, the orphanage has offered her a job because she she so she does so well with the children. She does so well with the children that, that um, they're offering her a job, which means she has a place to sleep. Um, she'll be basically, I guess, taking on the night um, the the night shift with the kids, um, going to college in the daytime. And I could be not more prouder of this girl. I've been knowing her for the last six years, so I've been involved in her life since she was twelve. And um, so if anybody wants to help, and I'll make sure I'll set something up um, with um, making sure that we um, get the money for her to go to college, I'm going to match um, up to $2,500. Any Anybody who wants to donate and help um, send Jennifer, get what she needs for college, I will match dollar for dollar up to $2,500, making sure we hit the $5,000 mark and send her to college. I think it's $5,000, somebody told me, it might be a little less, like 4,800 or something. But either way, we're gonna make sure that she goes to college. So I'll be talking more about that once I get into DR. Man, I'm just so proud of this, this, this young lady just to see her grow. Like I said, I've been knowing her since she was 12 years old, since I came into the orphan and she's been there. And now, just, you know, it's, it feels like one of my babies are going to college. So man, I'm just like, Ah, you know, she's not the first person that has left the orphan since I've been there, but she's the first one that's actually going to college. And man, I, I feel like a proud papa. So anyway, 
Uh, let me let me say and give a shout out to my boy Bobby Barnes. Thank you for the soup chat. Appreciate you, appreciate you, appreciate you. Don't have no message. He's just trying to support the channel. Man, I thank you, thank you, thank you. And we got Miss Marie in the background. We're about to have a conversation with her as well. About to bring her on. Rodney Woods, thank you, thank you, thank you for sir for the super chat. Says shout out to your brother Russ from KC to Texas. I got five on it. All right, all right. That's what I'm talking about. I got five on it. Oh, yeah, I remember that song by Snoop. All right, so let's bring our guest into the conversation. Hello. What's happening, Miss Marie? How are you? How's it going? How's it going, Russ? It's How's going it well. going, everybody in the building? It is going well. You looking good? Thank you. <laughs> Thank so, you. Uh, so, so, so have you made it back to Haiti, or ha are you still in Dominican Republic right now? No, I've made it back to Haiti. I'm okay. back Just in Haiti you know, and. Back in the hustle and bustle, you know how that is. All right. So, yeah. So let's so let's talk about um, how's Haiti right now. I remember uh, one of our conversations a few months ago. We talked about, and it was basically the gangs that were ruling um, Haiti. Is it, it ha has the government improved? Is the situation still the same? Um, don't say anything, and of course, that will put you in, in harm's way. But what can you say about what's going on in Haiti right now? Russ, from the last time we spoke or had a show about Haiti, the reality, and be honest, things have gotten worse. It has gotten closer, oh and um, it hasn't gotten much better. It's gotten worse. The the gang activities have just increased overnight. You hear more mm. uh, bad things happening to more innocent people. Um, communities wow. being invaded. So um, it's been a situation definitely in Haiti. So it's like you constantly being thankful for life itself living in Haiti. <laughs> wow. So living in Haiti right now is like living in hell, literally. I wouldn't say living in hell because bad things happen everywhere, Russ. The only difference with Haiti right. is we don't have access to 911. You feel like there is no mm. refuge. Um, this, You basically in it by yourself. So whenever you come into contact with anything that's life threatening you have to do what you know to do to save your life because don't think no helicopters or uh fire trucks or something like that is gonna come help you oh man that bad so this yeah no things wow. have gotten wow. bad it has really gotten bad i'm i'm gonna be honest I'm, now you know i'm not at loss for word person, but I, I'm truly at a loss of words because, um, it, you know, um, because, you know, I consider you my friend, my sister, and I'm certainly worried about your safety. Um, um, so how do, how do you feel being in Haiti right now? Well, Russ, one of the things that I do is mind my business very, very well. Thank God I learned to do that early on in my life. And that has mm -hmm. helped me a whole lot with my life in Haiti and living in Haiti. And uh, one of the things, too, is also being kind to people, which makes it that um, God continues to cover me going through my daily commute in Haiti. Um, do I mm. feel directly like there's something against me? No, I don't. But for me, if it will happen to someone else, I am no different because we're all God's creation. So if you can do something to somebody that's innocent, I feel like I'm no better than anybody. So basically I'm very careful. I'm structured. I have a curfew. You know, even that curfew don't okay. really help you because at any time anything can happen. 
but I make it where before I leave, mm -hmm. I'm attentive to what's going on in the streets. And, you know, before coming back home, I'm attentive and I make sure to come back home at a time that's, uh, you know, moderate. Okay. All right. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Um, well, still, I mean, the only thing I can say, baby, is stay safe. Please, please, oh, please definitely. stay safe. Um, you know, I know that you don't take um, crazy chances. You know, like I see some YouTubers, they want to go into the most dangerous neighborhoods, you know, to get some click and uh, get some clicks and some likes. And we we know a brother who went into a bad neighborhood in um, Brazil, um, mm -hmm. maybe two months ago, and uh, doing some footage. And five minutes later, wound up with a bullet in his head. So, um, wow. you know, please be careful, careful. You know, be careful. And for them brothers that are doing that on YouTube, man, because uh, I got you know, because there's one brother, man, I I, I worry about because I know uh, my brother checks in effect. You know, he goes into parts of, of different neighborhoods all over the world. And I my, my heart kind of jumped a little bit because I know the brother. I love the brother. I think the brother does excellent content. He is blown up, and I, I'm very happy for his success. But just a little, you know, maybe it might be the old man to me, but definitely a little concerned about him. So, uh, but I know you're not going in there do, in the neighborhoods trying to do anything crazy like that. So, good. Just stay safe, baby. Just stay safe. You know, stay safe. You know what, Russ? I've been in those bad neighborhoods. I, you know, a lot of the times when we're at a project, you don't see the behind the scene part of the project. Personally, there's mm -hmm. people, there's thugs everywhere. Let's just be street about it. It's not just in Haiti. What I think is um, no. there's no boundaries. That's that's why it's a problem in Haiti. But I can say anytime I've came in contact with them, um, somehow by the grace of God, maybe if it's my personality or whatever, somehow I always end up being under their protection because they know and I explain to them like, hey, I'm here to do something good, such and such, and they see it quickly. So I went in neighborhoods mm -hmm. that you guys don't know, but in the background, it's big things that's protected me. Why I'm, my cameraman walk around with, you know, uh, the camera. Mm -hmm. So no. making it my business, you know, and, and they wouldn't even care if I showed them, but me personally, I don't want to scare people. So what's happening, right. guys, is just the fact that it's so unpredictable at any time, they can be at war with each other and pe innocent people get hurt. So you just have to be mm. very, very careful. Like, uh, I don't have a problem with anybody. I don't try to be biased. And one thing for sure, I never speak bad directly against a certain group. I don't care what group it is. You know what team I stand on as far as for Haiti, you know? Mm -hmm. I know, I know, I know. All right, all right. So you just hey, you just had a recent trip to Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. Let's talk. Let's talk about that that you had in Dominican Republic. Uh, well, how first of all, how was it, and how and how long did you actually stay? I stayed two weeks. I want to say from December thirtieth all the way to the twelfth. I was in the Dominican Republic, and. Uh, I don't know. I had I have different feelings about it, Russ. Cause I had different experiences. Um, it's you, um, so I, I must share that I had a good experience because for the first time I was visiting Dominican Republic. But then I also dealt with mm -hmm. other stuff that made me feel like I definitely need to return and enjoy my time there with a clearer mind. And um, mm -hmm. with different people, like, I really wish you were there to, like, link up and have you guide me through some stuff. There were certain things I wanted to get done, and the people that I was around, I did not get to get it done. And um, mm. I had a good time, actually. Dominican Republic itself was 
I had mixed feelings too, Russ. A lot of mixed feelings. Okay. I think um, one of my biggest mixed feelings that I even shared on Life in Haiti is the fact that the minute I crossed the borders, I felt how cruel our leaders in Haiti had been towards the people. Um, it, it was so much you wanted to become an extremist because the drastic mm. difference between Dominican Republic and Haiti was just unimaginable to the eye. You know, I'm coming from the States. I was raised in the States, been deported back to Haiti mm -hmm. and adjusting to this life in Haiti. And then for me to go across the street and realize like the Texas is right here. And nobody mm. in Haiti is even attempting to copy some of the things which they're seeing right here, which gave me hope, but it made me see that what's happening in Haiti is so much bigger than what many of us assume is happening. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. And you got a lot of, uh, you know, I mean, what's happening in Haiti, they, they, you know, it, it's, just the history of, of Haiti and, and how, um, you know, France itself, you know, along with the, the support of the United States has really put Haiti on its knees. I mean, I think they had just stopped paying reparations to France, you know, within what, 2003, 2006, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it And that was crazy, Pay, paying them for, you know, basically their, their their freedom, you know, paying them because we lost slaves. I mean, I mean, and this has <clears throat> happened, you know, we, I mean, we talking going back centuries, even up to today, um, you know, the United States along with France and a few other countries are keeping Haiti divided because it helps them out. You know, a lot of people don't know about Haiti, but Haiti is rich with all, but where's the money going? You know, they're putting puppet leaders in, in Haiti you know they're making sure that uh that haitians fight each other they make sure that government fractions are fighting each other meanwhile you got some people in haiti living in you know in in uh resorts living plush lives mm -hmm. you know telling you how bad it is but meanwhile living the life of a king so you know like you said there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes of haiti and right now a lot of the governments um like I said, United States, France uh, are pulling a lot of strings and it only helps them. You know, it's like what they're doing in the Congo. You know, Congo should be like the richest, probably the richest um, nation on the planet because of, you know, the, you know, you can only get uh, a, that one source of material out of Congo that 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 goes into every cell phone, computer, everything. But what they do is the, the, the government keeps supplying the both sides with guns fighting each other while they steal the resources of the Congo. And the same thing is happening in Haiti. It's, it's nothing new. You know, it's divide and conquer. You know, by y'all fighting each other over scraps and crumbs, we're digging up and taking all your resources. So anyway, that's a whole nother topic. Um, so let's get into, um, <laughs> did you want to say anything, babe? Um, you good, you good, come on. I'm listening. I'm reading the comments right. also. <laughs> uh, so. Right. so, so what? So what? What comments you you, you want to? Oh, hold on. Let me. Oh give no! A uh, I was reading Haitian my... gunman, and he says, "Marie, me, when my deal pardon." He's like, he asked me for forgiveness, and I'm like, "What did he do?" <laughs> To ask me for forgiveness in my mind, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So, well, well, Haitian, but we ain't got listen. Um, cause we don't want to get all serious. Um, oh yeah. You know, those are serious topic. Um, but yeah, but uh, whatever you did, you just apologize to her on her IG or in an email. We don't want to put people business out here. But I want to give a shout out to my boy Luther Foss for um, super chat. I appreciate, appreciate, appreciate. It. So, but while you were in DR, you were doing some vlogging, and you did a vlog where, you, where basically you spoke your truth. And so, what what happened? 
when you spoke your truth it and and what were people kind of uh a little uh annoyed with 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 you say mm. well while i was in the dominican if republic you of course it's it's cool <laughs> While I was there, we uh, was living at the Sheridan for part of our time there. And um, the Malecon and uh, the Plaza, all of that, which is the main tourist attraction, is right there. And actually, mm -hmm. your you home. Mm -hmm. JC is who introduced me. He's like, you didn't get to go there. And I want to take you there, yada, yada, yada. So um, we ended up going there, and the first night, it was cool. Um, the set, Well, I'm going to just tell you, the first night, Russ, I had a few wine, and I'm not a drinker, guys. So that had me so drunk. Like, I wasn't sloppy drunk, but I wasn't attentive. So I actually went back again <laughs> the next day and really wanted to enjoy my time. So the next day when I went in, I had a sober mind. It was so much fun. I saw all the lights, the park. And then as I'm vlogging, I'm like, I'm noticing like it is a family atmosphere. It's really, really nice, definitely safe. But I notice a lot of other activities that's happening. But I don't say mm. anything. I'm just like, okay, going through it. Uh, and I end up meeting uh, Henry and the next day we go there during the day and like during the day is just a lot more so guys as I speak on this I don't want anybody to think like I'm homophobic I'm not here to judge anybody like I love everybody you know you know it's life you deal with me, I deal with you. You don't deal with me, Russ, I don't deal with you. And we good. We're not enemies, right? But I noticed mm -hmm. there was a lot of homosexual activity that was going on. And, and what where, where, where were you at this point? I'm on the Malecon. In, in, the Malecon in Santo Domingo. In Santo Domingo. Or, or in Sassou. Oh, okay. I went to Sasua too, but I'm in Santo Domingo on the Malico. Oh, okay. you you, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> you don't want to go to Sasua. <laughs> Sasua. <laughs> too much, guys. But anyways, while we're on the Malico, it one of the things that stood out for me, Russ, is the fact that I noticed a lot of young, handsome Haitian boys that was out there dressed up as men, as women, right? And I don't think nobody else noticed it because we were just having fun. So I mentioned it to my sister I was with. I'm like, do you notice that? Then she starts zooming in and she's mm. like, wow. I didn't notice, Marie, because it's so normal for me in the States. You know, it happens everywhere. So I have normalized it. So I don't really notice right. it. And I'm like, wow. It is a historical spot. It is a family area. However, this is prominent in this area. So I end wow. up mentioning it and Dominicans were jumping down my throat as if I was a Dominican hater. And I, me mm -hmm. personally, because I am the way that I am, I understand, you know, them feeling how they feel. But it is like, Someone telling me they are afraid to come to Haiti, and because I live in Haiti and I'm Haitian, I have a I have the right to be upset with that person. When in reality, mm. <laughs> that person have a right to have a fear, because it is something that they see that is happening. Right. I didn't understand what was the issue with. Dominicans having a problem with mentioning something that is reality that go on in Santo Domingo on the Malacom. Mm. Well, uh, I'm gonna tell you, the Dominican Republic is is it's a very 
what's the word, machismo country. Um, and, um, you know, very male uh, driven. And to, I guess, like for them to, um, somebody to kind of lift their skirt up and show what's under the skirt, I, I guess that's that's the problem that they had with that, that, that comment. But it's not like they don't know that it's not happening. Now, I'm going to be honest. This is new to me because I've been, uh, you're talking about the Malacón on George Washington Avenue in Santo Domingo? Because mm -hmm. that's where I, norm I normally stay at the Aguila, um Casino because I like, one, I, like, I love casinos, as everybody knows. And it's just, and, and they got movie theaters, they got tons of restaurants. I mean, uh, you know, that Malacone, I mean, it's, it's, it's a beautiful place. So, I um, mean, I haven't been to it in maybe two years or so. So mm -hmm. uh, things really have changed. And you said it's, it's a lot of young Haitian boys. Boys, a lot it's of young there. Haitian boys that was out there. And that's what I really wanted wow. to vlog about. Because we have a lot of young Haitians that is traveling out of Haiti and lying to themselves, saying that they are going to Dominican Republic to go to school. Whole nother story because in order for a Haitian to be qualified to go to school in the Dominican Republic, you first have to get your paperwork in order, especially to go to a university. You have to have your transcript right. uh, translated. There are things that you have to do ahead of time to prepare to get yourself in school. But a lot of them aren't right. doing that. And I just recently had this conversation with another Haitian young lady. She's like, I'm going to Dominican Republic to go to school. I'm like, well, what grade are you in right now? Literally, guys, I'm not being funny. This is just realistically speaking. This girl had completed third grade in Haiti. And I'm like, wow, this is the issue that Dominican Republic have with Haitian people. Baby, give yourself the opportunity to at least learn your language, finish high school, get a basic education in Haiti, and then find out what you need to do, and then go to school and further your education in the Dominican Republic. Because what happens is, Russ, when these um, young Haitians go to Dominican Republic in search of life, they end up being a part of the prostitution scene. And yes. a, one of the things that people don't want to admit is most Haitians that travel to Dominican Republic, they do not have money. And whenever you are involved in promiscuous activities like that, you leave yourself open to anything happening to you, especially catching disease. Nobody's educating them. Now, on the other hand, what's more is that you do have people, it seems, that prey on these young men. And they will specifically leave where they come from, the comfort of their home, whether if it's America and this and that, to come out to the Dominican Republic to have that meet and greet, whatever that they do. And men and women. Men and women. Men and women. The thing is, why is it a problem if it's spoke on when it goes on? Like I said, <clears throat> a lot of times people don't like their skirt being lifted up and being exposed, especially if somebody else is exposing it. You know, it's like we see it, but we're going to ignore it. You know, we're going to ignore what, what's going on. We're going to ignore what's happening because... Let's let's face it. It's it's fueling an, in, an industry which brings in money into the country. Let's just be honest, you know. So a lot of time, it, you know, it's, it's it's sort of the giraffe theory. Uh, um, you know, let me stick my head into the sand. If I don't see it, it ain't happening. You know, and you know, come on, we all know what that's about. We all know what that's about. 
So let me give a shout out to my uh, my boy Josh. Thank you, man, for the super chat. He says, great point, Uncle Russ. They're keeping us fighting each other. He was talking about um, when I was speaking on the, the, the situation with, with Haiti and the Congo and, and, you know, governments fighting each other and stuff. Yeah, so, um, you know, and, and that's basically what it is. L- let me tell you something. Dominican Republic is uh, is a beautiful country. It's uh, 90% of of my time spent in Dominican Republic over the last 20-something odd years. Um, from the time that I was able to um, be involved in this little girl's life and wind up adopting my daughter Solange, to now even having my, my beautiful daughter Amber, 90% of my time in DR has been fantastic. But it's that 10%. It's that ugliness that Dominican Republic does have, you know? Uh, and I always tell people, man, listen, you know, uh, like you said uh, something at the beginning, which I told people a thousand times. You said, when I'm in Haiti, I learned how to mind my business well. And um, if you go to Dominican Republic and you mind your business and don't get caught out there, um, you know, have anything to do with, you know, I would say, especially the, the police, law enforcement, you're pretty much going to be good. But because, and I'm not even talking about as someone who's perpetrating something. I'm talking about even as a victim. Because let's face it, depending on the Republic, even as a victim, you go to them and say, hey, this is happening. If it's ugly, hey, we're going, they're going to try and find a way. You're an opportunity. Not a person coming to me seeking help, but you're an opportunity. And, and, and you know, so I tell people, you know, my situation, you know, that's why I speak on it. And people have told me, man, Russ, you shouldn't talk about it. I said, listen, I did any demand come to me. I got receipts on who said what, you know, and how the shit went down. So, yeah, but the Dominican Republic is a fantastic country. It's a beautiful country. I mean, they got a lot of great things going on, but they got some serious, ugly shit going on, too. And to think that, um, you know, prostitution is not a main engine of Dominican Republic, then, you know, people are just lying to themselves. I, I, I did... You know, a couple of years back, I did three shows, had different attorneys on because most people think that the, that prostitution is legal in Dominican Republic. And I had to have three shows featuring three attorneys from different sectors of the law telling you that it wasn't. And people argued, people argued against me. And I'm like, you arguing against me, you arguing against people who are attorneys in Dominican Republic. But yeah, that is one side of the Dominican Republic. And like I said, it's become so normal that people say, hey, it's legal. And it's it's and like I said, it's it's sort of that we know it's there, but we're gonna leave it alone. You know, mm-hmm. we know it's there, but it's gonna leave it alone. So yeah, so I don't know what what the you know what the bad comments were about, especially coming from the Dominican Republic, um, because I mean. I, I'll say, say this, Russ, not to be interrupted. I think no, go ahead, babe. Dominicans felt a certain type of way because Haiti is going through what it's going through. And it was coming mm-hmm. from a Haitian woman. And let me remind people who Haitians mm-hmm. are. And Dominicans seem to think that me, I like when somebody criticizes. It doesn't bother me because while you think you criticizing me, I learn from it. So you gotta learn to listen to your haters too, because sometimes your haters they think they hate, but they spit knowledge, and they help you to look at yourself. Because of the fact that Haiti is going through something, it makes it that a Haitian person should not have an opinion about what goes on elsewhere. However. Quickly, we notice a difference when Dominicans are ready to cross and get out of Dominican Republic and go to the U.S. There, when they encounter racism, now it's close to home. But now everything stops and we have to do something because it is towards them. One of the things mm-hmm. Dominican needs to understand is that it is the Haitian government that put Haiti in the state that is in. But we the people, we still have opinion. You still have people that live in Haiti and we are people, we are a part of the world. 
just as things go on in Haiti and the whole world speak on things which is happening in Haiti. It doesn't make it that when we do travel, if we notice something that we can't speak the real because all day long people continuously speak bad on Haitians. <laughs> continuously. You know what I'm saying? And people forget and this is why I fight for education to become a priority because people forget who Haitians are. It's like they forget to put that respect on our name because no matter who you are, Haitians, we play a role in the freedom that black people all over the world have today is because of our ancestors. OK, so Facts. it's not it's not about being critical towards Dominican Republic. It's about this is a reality. And if when people come into your beautiful country, you do not want them to. Why don't you run them off, too, if that's a problem with you? It's not a problem with me. I just noticed it. I don't have a problem with people because that's what they choose to do. That's their life. See, obviously, even though it's going on, just as you say, because it, it's a business and it creates money, it's okay to keep it under the skirt, but don't talk about it. So it's okay to belittle Haiti on the Dominican side because it gets millions of views and it makes money. So us Haitians, it should be okay when they belittle and criticize Haiti. No, it's not to be a hater. It's not to say, I mean, we'll get into that part because I had so much good stuff to say about Dominicans. But the uh, sexual, it's a huge thing. And it's drawing other cultures to come in and do the same thing, especially Haitians. Hmm. Well, Haiti is is Dominican Republic's neighbor, and you know things are so bad in Haiti that I mean, if somebody's in a desperate situation and they see a lifeline, and that lifeline may not be the greatest lifeline, but it is a lifeline, they're going to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. You know that's that's just facts. People, that, desperate people do desperate things. Thanks. You know that that's just that's just fact. You know, desperate people do desperate things and not just Haitians or Dominicans, Americans, Canadians, whoever, F Filipino, Thai, Thai people, desperate people do desperate things. And that's just mm -hmm. that's just facts. Because you know? uh, the same thing that's going on in Dominican Republic, honestly, is going on all over the world. I've literally been all over the world and I'm telling you, every spot from China you know who they really hate they they skirt being blown up they got the same thing going on in china japan all the rest of these countries got the mm -hmm. same thing going on but nobody just want to be exposed that's it you know um because every country has its good and you know has its pros and every country has its cons that's true you know so that's my one take of, on that one one you of know? the things i do want to say so that we don't focus just on well before we go to the good let, let me get the bad out of the way one of the things okay. that really really bothered me Russ, about dominican republic was how haitians lived in fear remember i also mentioned how i did not enjoy my time as i should i felt as if mm -hmm. if i was around more american people more people that spoke english and then I was surrounded by people that really, really knew the country. My trip would have been a whole lot different and a lot better. Haitian people. Mm -hmm. Let me interrupt you for just one second. Because I know when we were talking about you coming to Dominican Republic, I know I encouraged you, encouraged, encouraged, encouraged you to come on to the North Coast. But what made you decide Santo Domingo? Because I think you would have had a different time. I think you would have had a total different experience if you had came into the North Coast, especially like I said, within the Puerto Plata area, where there are where there is a huge um, supportive expat community. And girl, they'd have loved on you all day. Yes. Yeah, so but I'm gonna tell you how. 
because my trip, I've had a visa and in the process, I end up coming into some medical issues. You know, I recently had surgery for um, a huge fibroid tumor. So after that, I had to go through the healing process. Before that, it was the symptoms. It was just not good for me for a few months. So uh, one of my sisters just really wanted to take me out of Haiti. And she's like, I'm going to, I got the hotel. She first had us a suite in the embassy. Then we went to Sasua. Then she took me to Sheridan. So it wasn't like my trip. Like I was contacting you for me to come on my own. But this time I was being hosted out. So then I end up okay. like, okay, well, I get to celebrate New Year's in Dominican Republic. Why not? So um, I end okay. up just going. So when she came, we ended up leaking, um, hooking up with some other Haitian friends that she had. And they were awesome people. They were great people. Okay. They were very warm and welcoming. Yeah. I mean, the, the people, they were great hosts. But the fact that they were Haitians and even though they had a visa and they needed to check in every 30 days and because they had not checked in or the ones that don't have a visa, either don't have a passport, they were restricted. And you can see the fear when they came across police officers or like checkpoints. And me, I'm just like delusional to what's happening because... In my Um, mind, you know, I'm here legally and, you know, you still need to give me the opportunity to prove if I'm legal or not. But the fact that they knew they weren't legal and have seen what has happened to other Haitian people, that was the fear. Now, a thing that is good, nothing bad happened. We went through checkpoints and thank God nothing happened because me being a content creator, I was kind of pushing them to take me places and stuff like that. And everything went well. Personally, Russ, I did not experience um, racism. Why I did, I realized it's because it's all about money. All of this, we put in, race, we're putting color, we're putting sex. It's not about any of that. I came out of the Dominican Republic knowing that Haitians are treated the way we are treated, not just because we are black, but because we don't bring money. We're more like slaves for those that have money for them to use and abuse us there but we had no value because we didn't bring in money, the mass amount that's coming in illegally. But when you came in and um, living at a spot where it's money, you had to, they're all kissing your butt. It's, hello, ma'am, how are you doing? And what can we do? And what can we do this and that? So is it really solely about color? Color can be a part of it. But it is about money because I could have been illegal. But because I was illegal with money, I was going to make it. I decided to be considerate with of the people that I was around that was hosting me because they were in fear. But I myself, I believe I could live there illegal or not and just make it. Because as long as you give them the facade that there is money, you can tip, you can be, you know, you should be kind. It's all about money, guys. (laughs) That's what I saw first. How many times have I said that on my channel? Let me me tell you something. Um, Money is is king in DR. Mm -hmm. Money money is, is straight up, straight up king in DR. And I've always and I've and I've always pushed back when somebody would tell me about, you know, um, Dominicans are racist against Haitians. And I always said it's not. You know, it's more his. It's it's more of the the, the uh, relationship, more historical, because of, you know, when when Haiti helped DR 
free, get free from Spain. They decided it's a nice place for us to set up. But it's more real, but it's but it's it was more history, not racism. And then you and you just said to just drop the jewel on me about the money part, and you're absolutely correct. So those two things together, um, yeah, I, I can I can see the bad blood, I can see the, the bad intensity, but I can tell you this, even with money, right? Even with money, I I own property, I I I, I on a condo, I brought plenty of money. Have helped people move to you Let me tell you something. If you're not Dominican, I don't care with money. Uh, it, mm, I'm trying to be politically correct here. Let's let, let let's just say, man, Dominican Republic's greatest uh, strength which is their nationality, is their greatest weakness at the same time. I'll say it and I'll put it like that. Because what gives them strength, what, what makes people appreciate Dominicans is seeing them stick together. But what what, what makes you, 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 you know, you, you look at Dominicans sideways, sideways is when you could be, you could be dead wrong, dead wrong. Like I said, you could be the victim of, of a crime in Dominican Republic but if you try to push and get this person arrested or whatever, you become you you, you not, now you have not only the, the, the person that did something against you, now you will have the law against you. How dare you try to arrest one of our citizens? Mm -hmm. Now, if you pay, then we, then we might do it because you know everybody got a price. But Dominican Republic, it's all about money. It's it's. It's one hundred percent. It's about money. Mm -hmm. It is one hundred percent about money. One hundred percent about money, and that's facts, not fiction. Yeah. So I agree. One Absolutely. of the things I will say about Dominican Republic is, you mentioned something that made me think about Haiti. That their strength is their weakness, and I thought about. Um, la Zinion, c'est la force. You know, unity we stand. You know, unity is uh, strength. It's the same thing in Haiti. What's supposed to be like part of our national anthem, what we stand for, is also our weakness because we live in opposition of it. You know, is division, is none of that. Anyway, a whole different story. But one of the things that I really, really enjoyed about Dominican Republic is how much they love their country. You can tell they are a nationalist. They take pride in their country. And they were really, really, really kind people. So while Dominicans, you know, a lot of the times I think people just hear the criticism louder and they don't hear the good because they are actually kind people compared to um, going into a restaurant in Haiti. Now, I love Haiti. You know, of course, I'm team Haiti, but we need to work on customer service to attract tourism, especially when the country get better because things cannot remain that way. And you can go to somewhere very nice in Haiti and it's like people have an attitude it's like, uh, like, what do you want? I noticed a drastic difference. It made it a lot easier to tip people in Dominican Republic because they were kind, they were um, helpful. You know, whenever that they could help, they were quick to assist. So that was good things too about the, and how modernized they are. Uber, in driver. All these things that I hear from a conversation with you guys. You know, I'm about to Uber out, I'm about to Uber eat. I'm, all of that is unheard of as of right now for Haiti, which makes it that it attracts more people into the country because it's so much easier for people to commute because Uber grants you that level of security. So, you know, they have to register you register, so there's like boundaries, there's security there. 
that um, I think our people definitely need to, um, we, if we can copy the bad, we definitely can copy the good. No, absolutely. I, I mean, you know, safety factor um, comparing Haiti to Dominican Republic is like comparing, uh, uh, it's like, it's like, it's like giving a, a, a whale a tic tac, you know, it's, it's just, you know, there's no comparison. Um, but customer service, I got to push back a little bit. I always tell people, listen, if you want customer service, you go to Dominican Republic to have fun, enjoy the culture, enjoy the people, and, and enjoy the music, enjoy the food. But Dominican Republic got some of the worst goddamn customer service. But that does not mean you cannot have a great time. I've got some of the worst customer service in the Dominican Republic and had one of the best times in a certain restaurant. Now, Dominican customer service works if you know the person. Now, restaurants that I frequent, oh, I get fantastic customer service. I get great. Mm -hmm. They see me come in there. If I if I sit down, somebody could have been there an hour before me. They're going to walk over to my table. And the same thing I know happens in, 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 in other restaurants that I may not be known in. But like I said, I go in that particular restaurant because I like the atmosphere. I like the vibe. But I, you know, the Dominican Republic, I don't get um, an attitude if I got to wait a little extra or if I got to find somebody so I can pay the bill. And a lot of times when I order, um, not all the time. If I'm familiar with a restaurant, I'll because I'll, I know they get, I know they're gonna get me right. I'll just say, "Hey, give me my bill when you bring the food, so I can pay it that way. Ain't got to wait around." Mm -hmm. Now, if I don't know the restaurant, I'm not gonna do it because you order something in the Dominican Republic, and it could be something totally different they bring you. But nobody goes to Dominican Republic for customer service. You go because yeah. you, you, you know the vibe, the the, the culture, the the music, the dancing, the you know, you you, you go to Dominican Republic for a total different thing. Like I said, I've told people I've had some of the worst customer service and had some of the best times in my life. And that's facts. What's up? You know. But if you what think that's great customer service, really bad. Well, compared to Haiti, guys, I want to say I definitely give that to them. <laughs> So, Russ, you got to come to Haiti and just experience it a little bit. And then you tell me how bad the customer service is compared to um, Haiti and um, Dominican Republic. But I see you didn't touch base well, on Sasua because Sasua. I, 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 I love Sasua. Sasua. Listen, if anybody goes to Sasua, know what Sasua is about, right? But like I tell people, Sasua is not Dominican Republic. Sasua is one small little strip that people go to to have fun. But a lot of people, because I even ask cats, I said, they, I asked them, well, where have you traveled to? They said, oh, well, I've been to Dominican Republic. Anywhere else? No, just Dominican Republic. I said, well, well where are Dominican Republic to Sasua? Have you gone up to Puerto Plata or Cap Verde? Right? These are the two closest cities to Sasua. <laughs> Um, well, Montiano or whatever. And they say, no, I just go to Sasua. I said, brother, you ain't been to Dominican Republic. You, you, yeah, you touched down in Dominican Republic, but if you stayed in this strip, and I'm talking about cats who've been going there for like, you ask how long you been going to Dominican Republic? Five, six years. And they just stay. You know, it reminds me of the person who never left the neighborhood. Mm. You know, they know these like, 20 blocks, like the back of their hand. They can walk through the 20 blocks blind. Back but they streets. never leave the neighborhood. Back streets. So that's the same thing with a lot of cats that go to Dominican Republic. You they 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 got this like this 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 uh, 15 strip block and they stay there. That was that's it. And they say that's Dominican Republic. I said, no. I said that's that's just one micro um city inside of the Dominican Republic. But I tell you, you have not been to the Dominican Republic. The only thing you've ever seen was Sasua. Sasua, like everybody knows what Sasua is about. Sasua is where you go you have to have fun. Like I said, you don't go there looking for love. You don't go there looking for a wife. You don't go there looking for a husband. You don't go looking there to, you know, um, raise awareness on things. You go there to have fun. <laughs> That's it. 
But I saw like different type of people. I was in there with Flip. Flip had all sorts of people, European people from France. I met a few different people and they were actually there with kids. And I thought like, this is not the best environment for kids, but maybe they didn't know. And just... That's where the Airbnb was or whatever. You know, you don't know the reason, but. Yeah, but you go there for fun. And some people, they, they may go to the marina, stay right there on that resort. Well, on that resort, everything is protected. You know, you got that resort, which is close to the beach, and that may be where they bring in their kids. And I'm telling you, because I know people take the kids, you know, stay at the marina, you can hire anybody, you can hire somebody to, to watch your kids while you go out and party at night. Those do their thing. I see married couples do their thing. You know, everything from open marriages to whatever. You go to Sasua for one reason, to have fun. That's it. Nothing else. Not to save lives, not to raise awareness, <laughs> not to... Not to don't Try say to find it. out the next Don't grade. Don't want to be saved. You go to some school <laughs> for one, not to be saved. Maybe, maybe to be renewed, renewed, <laughs> not saved, renewed, but you go to school for one reason, to have fun. Let Spirit. loose. That's it. Let loose. And whatever, and whatever you into, whatever your proclivities are, how, however vast your imagination, if you got the money, it can happen. You go to the store for one reason, have fun. That's it. That is it. That's all I'm going to say on that. I know that I enjoy the food reason. at Flip. Flip has some good food. He do got some good food. And he got yeah. a great staff. I always mm -hmm. have a good time. Matter of fact, um, Flip gets so busy um, sometimes when I'm there. I, I you know, I, I've walked in Flip place and, and, and went behind the bar. And I was like, if the waitress take too long, I go behind there and make my own drink. <laughs> and I remember the last time I was in there, I did that, and, and the waitress was like, "Hey, hey, hey!" And Greg was like, "Listen, it's, he's drunk. Don't worry about it. Just, <laughs> he's harmless. He'll make his drink. And I, he'll, he, he, he's like, he's like that. He's like that wandering, that, that wandering cat that kind of wander in your house, and then he wander back off and go back outside. But it was so you know, we we actually kind of made a running joke out of it. But yeah, no, but but he has you know, Flip has everybody in there. But Susua is you know they have everybody in there. You know you have you have Europeans, you have you have uh, you, you have Americans, you have black, you have white, you have Spanish, you have everything in Susua. Mm -hmm. Anything, everything. Like mm -hmm. I, like I tell people, is in Susua. You can find it. That's just that's just fact. You no can way. tell that from Susua where you really can't even judge them. I mean. It's not to judge. judge. You knew what it was in Sasua. Like, and I did a video there. It was a good video. It's like, but people just took it personal with the Malacan. You know, like it's okay to say what you say about Sasua. It's like, okay. It's I guess because you're saying, well, Dominicans are some very beautiful women. I went there. Mm. I'm like, okay, knowing black men, I see why black. This is a black man heaven, because they are some beautiful women in the men. Even the men, really, really nice looking. Listen, that's I, what I say. The one thing you gotta have all your screws tight going there, because you <laughs> you will be a victim if you just going up in there getting too loose. You might come out. Mortgage, you might come out yeah. really bad back home. Not just from hold on, hold on. But see, everybody think it's is one thing, it's it's one side. It's not. I've seen women get exposed to Sasua and they break up with their boyfriends and husbands. <laughs> I'm telling yeah. you facts. Yeah, I get the calls, mm -hmm. I get the texts. I mm -hmm. get a little message. And I'm like, huh? Mm -hmm. Man mm -hmm. say took his took his took his girlfriend or wife to the sewer and told him, listen, I, I extended my trip. I extended <laughs> my trip. Ext we it's not we extended our trip. She extended her trip. <laughs> 
I'm telling you, so you got to have your mind. You got to be, look, you're going on vacation. What you going to do there? Stay there. Keep in mind, guys, gals, you got a family back home, you know, because if you get caught up in the superficial and the beauty, uh, and who knows, he might. What's worse is when a woman draw you in with her beauty, but gives you no value, guys. That's another subject. Mm. That's one of the things that some of the passport bros need to understand. These women, mm. they know they're beautiful, right? And they're after mm. one thing, and you coming through acting real thirsty, so they're going to sell you that mm. dream, but it doesn't mean because they're selling you a dream that you have value to them. So if you're going to do what you do, don't forget about what's really important. Baby, I, I'm so happy you said that. I say that I'm just getting over a slight cold. I see that. I, I see, see that, that all all the time, all the time. And I'm going to tell you, people do not listen. They don't listen. They do not listen. Mm-hmm. They do not listen. I just had a, I just did a vlog about telling guys, you know, don't date women that work in bars. You cannot. You know, my, my girlfriend works in a bar, but she's cool. She's different. No, she's not. She's absolutely not. No matter where, where, where at you work. They're in there to sell you a fantasy. And, and they're uh, good at it. You get caught out there. Not good at it. They're great at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you feel better, Russ. Well, I feel good. I just got this persistent cough. So one of the things I, I said I, I would talk to you about is how uh, the ladies in Thai been getting real gangster with the African-American women. I noticed that's a big thing. Not just Thai, it's Southeast Asian women. And I think a lot of them are coming out because you got a lot of not what I've seen, um, even and, and maybe because I guess maybe I'm more into uh, social media, but a lot of sisters have been coming out saying how they're poor, they're uneducated, they're this, they're that, blah 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 blah, blah. and um, you know social media is a two-edged sword. It snaps back nowadays, and. So if you if you bring some heat, expect some heat back now. Expect mm-hmm. the heat back. And, you know, and Southeast Asian women, just like American women, they know their value. They know that they, they know what they know their value. It's all about, I think, uh with the passport bro movement. This is something too. I'm about to share this for us. And I might get some hate, but not for me. I'm analyzing the passport bro thing. But for how many years have men and women traveled the whole world? Why is it that when us black men or black people start doing something, we put an attachment to it? And I see this is the thing. Mm hmm. Oh, go ahead, please. No, I want you to, to get in. See, this is the thing. It's it's not like you said, you know, people have been traveling for years. Um, especially um Europeans. Blacks mostly traveled when they either had money, like you know, like James Baldwin or or Tina Turner, you know, some people who moved overseas. Because they were, they had the money, so they they can get that exposure. They had that exposure, or cats that went into the military. 
like a lot of guys that got stationed in Germany and decided we're not coming back to America, you know, to be called the N-word and all this other stuff. And so nobody cared about, you know, a few men here and there going overseas. But now it's not just the the military guys or or, or, or the stars or, you know, the, the actress here. It's, it's educated men that got their money together, got their mind together, got their shit together. Now they're taking their money and going overseas to find, um, as as a lot of um, as a lot of uh, men would say, that firm fit um, and feminine female. And a lot of a lot of Western women, especially within the U.S., have got masculine. You know, I've never heard a white woman tell me I don't need a man. Never. I've never heard it. I've never ever heard a Spanish woman say I don't need a man. I've never heard a Lebanese woman say I don't need a man. But what do you hear from black women in the United States? I don't need a man. Well, God damn it, then you find yourself without one. And you got and you go over to Southeast Asia. And what they tell you, I need a man. I want to take care of a man. I want to I want to be there to cook his meals. I want to be there to wash his clothes. I want to be there to give him peace at the end of the day. So when you when when they see that. It just ain't the nerds and it just ain't the dusty guys or that and they would say, but it's the brothers with they shit together. Listen, it's, it's it, hey, that's scary. And what they don't say is that 57, oh, you know, there's 57% of black men in America do not have children. Did you know that? 57% of well, black I, men mm-hmm. do not have I think that's so where now what are they thinking about the, 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 Well, I, I think that's where a lot of the insecurity stems from, Russ, with black women. Mm, they're seeing a lot of the successful black men leave. And it's pretty much the issue that we have with some of the people. They're not see, they're hearing more of the criticism. Instead of looking at themselves in the mirror and saying, hey, there is things that I could have handled differently in my relationship and let me change it. Instead of uh, going Mm -hmm. on and on with a generation of this bad attitude, I don't need a man, I don't need this. And then it has a lot to do with culture too, Russ. The culture in the U.S. devalues men especially black men, which is what a lot of the East Haitian women are saying. Like, how dare y'all try to talk about us, say we're poor, we're this, when a lot of these women, they're really intelligent, speak multiple languages, do this, they have all sorts of different things going on. But then you are in America with all these opportunities and a lot of them don't even take advantage of the opportunities that they have. But how do I say this? I'm speaking to myself in Creole. You hear them holler racism and then the whole world stands up with them. What I think is um, there's that insecurity. Maybe they, they're they hearing more. The criticism is louder. And obviously some of them may have had bad experiences and it has a lot to do with culture. Being a Haitian woman, we since we were young, we've seen examples of that too, Russ. A lot of Dominicans, they've seen examples of that. I'm not sure how East Haitian and all, you know, they probably see, it's a thing in our culture for a young lady to be married. It's a thing for us to love our husbands, to be loyal to him. And men also assume that responsibility of the man of of the house. There's some other guys that's jumping on with passport bros. Maybe that's why too, because they're doing it to have that level of control. Whereas you do have some of you guys that's had bad relationships that are good men with women that's not compromising, you know? But I don't know. I'll let you speak. 
Yeah, but if you look at, right, and I think it's this whole feminism, this whole feminist movement. And I'm going to say this, and I know I'm going to get some heat. But let me help sisters out. And I'm, I know I'm going to hear some heat. Because sisters right now, they're trying to attach themselves to these different movements, like the alphabet community. Or like, let's say, you know, even from like back in the day where they had the women's suffrage, suffrage movement. And they and when they see how white women move, oh we, well, we want a part of that. We want to do that. We want to jump on that bandwagon. We want to begin become. We want to become stronger. And let me say this to my my, my black sisters: they're not your friends. I know <laughs> they are not your friends. And you can you can want you can want all the, the 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 amenities, the bling as as a white woman in America as you want, but I promise you, they're not your friend. And when shit hit the fan, they're not gonna be there to come to the rescue. And now we're in America, with all this uh, Me Too movement, with all this Me Too movement, where you know a woman could say, "Listen, um, I had a relationship with Russell." Um, 40 years ago, 30 years ago. And I could be brought up on charges for shit. I, I don't even remember you. We met at a club. I may have, we may have smashed in my car or something. I don't even remember you. But you see me doing things. You see me got money now. You see, oh, I want a piece of that. So, and the laws are written where, listen, you want some of that? You could take it. So what if it's 30 years ago? So what if it's 25 years ago? You see what Russell Simmons did. You, you, when, they, when they brought that heat on Russell Simmons, what did, what, what, did, what did he do? He's like, listen, you ain't going to Bill Cosby or R. Kelly me. He picked up and moved to Bali. Ain't been back to the U.S. since. Mm -hmm. I'm out. So in America, men are watching all this. You, you're watching marriages, right? Which is a business in, 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 in the United States. Hmm. My marriage, $250,000. The judge told me, you're going to have to sell. I said, listen, I ain't got that $250,000. He said, well, you're going to have to start selling stuff. You won't have to, whatever you, whatever you got up to $250,000, whether it's in materials, services, or whatever, you're going to have to sell and pay this woman. A men are seeing this, and, and it's like, it ain't worth it. Or you or you working hard, you know, you you you, you know, you have it, you have a child or two kids with somebody, you break up. Yeah, you I want to take care of my kids, but they're being used as a pawn, and now I gotta work two, three jobs just to support myself. You know, I make four thousand dollars a month and she gets you know fifteen hundred of that. And she ain't even trying to work because she goes get, you know, the the uh I forgot what you call that. It's Social Security, the, where they pay your your freaking rent and everything else, and you paying adult support. You ain't even paying child support. You paying adult support. It, mm. Listen, smart man. When he when you see that, it's like oh hell no. And see now it's not just the older cats like myself. It's these young brothers in their twenties, in their twenties. See social media having you know having a laptop lifestyle, working remotely. Oh, they know how to work this. They know how to work this. So now they're not only seeing this for themselves, they're seeing it for their daughters. And all the time, the women was thoughts. You're growing up, you know, you're in your 20s, you look cute. The guy that, that majored in the computer class that was the smartest one, nah, I ain't want him. I want the thug that, that's in and out of jail. Now at 40, the thug don't look good because he spent half, he, you've been in a relationship with this guy for 20 years, but he's been in jail 15 of those 20 years. You've been going up there visiting him, back and forth to jail. You got three kids. Every time he get out of jail, you, you get pregnant by this fool. Brothers are, listen, if that's the type of men you want, keep them. We out. We out. And I'm happy to see it. I'm happy to see it. I'm happy to see it. And when, I, and when I hear, especially women, you know, sisters say, oh, they just want, you know, Brazil, they want these European women. Listen, you got guy, cats going over there to Brazil, getting Afro-Cubans, I mean, Afro-Brazilians, Afro-Cubans, Afro-Dominicans, Afro, you know, and you hear sisters say, you know, oh, 
you, you, you ain't dating no real black woman. I, I had to ask the sister, what makes you more black than a, than, a, than a black Cuban? What makes you more black than a black Filipino? What makes you more black than a woman from Nigeria? What the hell makes you more black? So I could knock down every argument they had. But the bottom line is men are seeing what's going on in America, the society, how it's changed, how, you know, women say, I want my independent. I'm an independent woman. And guess what they're doing now? They're giving it to them. But the women who are making these songs, um, pumping this culture, you know, like be like a Beyonce, like a uh, like a Cardi B, and the rest of these women. Guess what they're going home to? Their husbands. I spoke on that too, Russ. I remember Cardi B was yeah, Cardi B was doing a live one day, and she was singing her song about you know that. W8 wet, you know, I don't even want to say it because you know you're such a lady class. I can't even say the song. It's okay. Her I, daughter I, walked into mm -hmm. she immediately cut the music off. And this is like on her live. And somebody said, Hey, why'd you cut the music off when your daughter came to the room? She said, My daughter don't listen to my music. <laughs> Meanwhile, you listen to a music, you got your 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 daughters and your car pumping it, that wet ass pussy. At, you know, in your car with your children. Mm. But the one who's making the record won't let her child listen to her own stuff. That's how we're so twisted with social media. People are so caught up into all the wrong things and they're not seeing that yeah. even 50 cents he rap about drinking and drugging it. And this man clearly in an interview stated he got water in his cup. <laughs> he don't. He doesn't even drink yeah. alcohol. You know, so yeah. that's why it's the same thing I say, like, when traveling, you have to have your mind in place. In life, you have to have your mind in place and prioritize. I feel that Cardi mm -hmm. B and um, what is it, Megan and Stallion, those are the it things. I don't want their people to come troll me. I'm not saying anything about them. But they are a problem to the generation of this young generation because they are promoting something that clearly is not right. They don't need a man. They don't need to cook. They don't need to clean. Even biblically, women, we were not made for that. It's okay to work and make money. And even if you can afford a maid, but you don't raise your daughter to tell us she doesn't have to do that. She's a woman. That's what we were created to do. So it is all mm -hmm. about the culture. See, in Haiti, no matter how rich a family is, we have the traditional thing. You're going to see you put your little girl in the chair and teach her how to wash dishes. She's going to see how you are with your husband. You know what I'm saying? So she, there are things that culturally she's going to learn and just because she has all this money and from, I think the richer you are, the more the value is instilled in our culture. And mm. I think that is why overseas you have different, you, you find different attributes in women. You know, you mm. find different attributes. Yeah. yeah. Well, let, let me take a minute to uh, give a couple of shout outs to my super chats. Thank you to Cardero Blackman says team TMD. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, let me give another shout out to my other brother here. Um, Pat Finder. He says, where do I find the slim ladies in the DR? You can find them all over. I'm going to tell you, Port of Plata is saturated with slim, beautiful uh, Dominican and Haitian beautiful ladies. When I say saturated, I mean saturated. So if you're on the East Coast, you know where to go now. Uh, let me see if I got another super chat in here. All right. Yeah. So um, like I said, and the women who are promoting this culture are going home to their husbands, going home, raising their kids. The women that are, like I said, so sisters could keep being caught up into this whole bullshit being misled, miseducated <clears throat> by by people who don't even give a shit about them. 
like I said, the, the women overseas, especially Southeast Asia, but not just Southeast Asia, Brazil, see, um, Colombia, they're like, listen, oh, them good men want to bring their money, their time to, to, to another country and treat me like a queen, like I can't get here in my own country. Hell yeah, they, they're accepting it. Absolutely. Why wouldn't it? And, and to be quite honest, like I tell everybody, listen, um, I'd rather have a woman who is who has no money, right? Zero money, but can bring me peace. I'd rather have a woman that can bring me peace. I pay all the bills, but knows how to take care of my household, knows how to treat me never nags me let me enjoy my life let me enjoy her let us enjoy our life together because <coughs> a man involved a woman he's spending money anyway he is it's just that <coughs> i'd rather spend my time and money where i'm getting better value true and that that's just what women around the world need to um to understand so that they could we need to start looking at ourselves a lot more you know especially black women checking the attitude you know um even myself as a woman i, I cannot handle that sort of energy you know um even from men that are very negative that nitpicks and this and that and it, it comes, it starts right then and there. And I think two men have to take accountability to us. One of the reasons oh, absolutely. why um, overseas women have that culture is they're seeing an example of it. Men have to start taking responsibility as the king that you are. I think in the States, and I'm not making excuses because there's no excuse to mistreat your mate. It's no excuse to say you have a man and you don't want to cook for him. That To me, some of the stuff that I hear from other, from some of the guys, I'm like, is he making this up? Because, I mean, I grew up in the States, and even though I had all sorts of different friends, I don't hear of none of my friends' husbands having this type of complaint. But it has to ha be happening because too many of you guys say it has happened. So I think men too have to assume responsibility for us by being a patient and loving example too within the home. And know that a lot of women, especially black women, they come from single parent households. And with that, they just did not have an example of what a wife should be like because they've always seen mom and mom the example she gave was work 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 to take care of the whole household and some men came from the same type of household too and they don't really know how to lead that house so it takes two well I, i'm i'm gonna be real honest with you because i love you I tell men, get your passport and get out. I ain't even trying to, I, ain't, I don't even tell the man how you work it out in the U.S. I say, this is how you work it out. You get your passport, you get your money together, and then you leave. Now, that doesn't mean that every relationship you're going to find overseas is going to be peaches and roses. That don't mean that those other women come with a whole, they don't come with their own sets of issues and problems, too. Trust me, they do. But if somebody asks me, do you want a headache at, if, would you rather have a headache at two or a headache at 10? Give me the two every day, every day, all day long, all day long. And I don't have to worry about losing half of what, of everything that I work for. Let me tell you some relationships, marriage in, in the United States, it's not worth it. If there's no upside for a man in marriage in the U.S., zero zero because if it goes bad you're going to lose big now unless not unless you happen to marry an heiress you happen to marry a millionaire well now you act get half of her shit 
But for a man that got his stuff together, there's no upside to marriage in the U.S. Zero. Zero percent upside to marriage, especially as a black man in the U.S. There's zero percent upside to it. So why, why, why? So why link your wagon up to something like that when when I know there's no upside to it? There's none. And it goes bad. It's gonna really go bad. It's gonna go. It's gonna go straight. Haiti bad. <laughs> so no why problem. is it that okay, Russ? If you marry a time lady and mm -hmm. you take her back with you to the U.S., do you mm -hmm. not think that I you to build a life? I no, I wouldn't do that. You, you got to use somebody else. That I tell people, if you meet a woman in her country, whatever country that may be, you keep her there. Because once you bring her back to the U.S., she's going to get Americanized. No. I'm going to tell you the situation. Me, now, my daughter, mom, she had a cousin that got, she had a cousin that, that, that got divorced, right? Went back to, went back to, to went back to, to the, to DR. And his cousin started doing this. Now I'm with this chick almost two years, got a kid. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? I've been paying everything for two years. But this cousin went back, got Americanized. Whatever happened with the situation, got booted out. <laughs> but got this big child support, support check. Doing this. And all hell went back. That American, that, that so tainted was cool for two years, almost two years. But got that American, Americanized cousin. And now I gotta go back and do all this bullshit. But like I said, the headache for me, it ain't that bad. You know, that's what attorneys are for. I pay the attorney, do my thing, you know, but it's not half of what it would be in the United States. In the United States, man, I would be like, all right, half my shit is gone. So even when it goes bad overseas, you ain't got to worry about losing half your shit. It goes bad in, in the States. Man, you, you, you. listen, at 60, I ain't trying to go back to work. I ain't trying to go back to work. But I know, but there are people who went through divorce late in life. You, you may have just got retired. And now you got to go back to work because your spouse took more than half your shit. Now I'm getting half your retirement. I'm getting half your social security. I'm getting half of this, half of that. And plus, we've been married so long. I get, you know, yeah, the kids are grown, but give me, uh, give me um, um, alimony. There's no upside. There's no upside. No matter what age category you fall in. No upside. You, like I said, you want your headache at a two or do you want it at a 10? So, no, it wouldn't be me. Like I said, if, if, and, and, and try to get her as far away from her family as possible. Shit. I'm going to tell you the perfect scenario would be for me. Give me a, 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 a Dominican lady and bring or a Brazilian woman and bring her here in Thailand. I would live the perfect life. It'd be the perfect life. we the perfect life. Because even Haitian women, Haitian women used to not be headaches, but Haiti, Haitian women in Dominican Republic, they starting to, they, you know, because Dominican ladies are starting to get that 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 feminist thing going on. I guess because, like I said, listen to social media, Cardi B, TikTok, and all that stuff. And Haiti women, Haitian women used to never give you that headache, but Haitian women starting to get, they starting to now act like the Dominican women, and Dominican women act like what the American women. So it's starting to it's starting to seep in there too. Trust me, it's starting to seep in there too. That's why I said let's come to the other side of the world. Hell, but trust right. me, even Southeast Asian Thailand women they got their issues too. You, I was gonna say, bro, you can answer for the past four bros, but do you think that a woman should not have an opinion? I think all women should, uh, no, I, they should have the opinion. I, I like a woman. Because if you, you're because if you sharing your knowledge with me, that means I'll know more. 
Absolutely. I value my, my woman's opinion. Absolutely value her opinion. She should have an opinion. If my thing is not shut up and, and do everything my way. You know, I've never had that opinion. I've never had that shut up. You know, now I will say this. In my older years, I have adopted it's going to be my way. But I'm smart enough to know, listen, if you, you know your culture, you know your customs, you know your country better than I do. So if you tell me, listen, if you do this, this is going to go bad. Oh, I'm listening to you. I'm going to listen to you. Mm -hmm. A wise man will always listen to his spouse. Wise man will always listen to his spouse. Yes. You should have your opinion. You should absolutely have it. You should not be one of the voiceless. No, uh -uh. I don't believe that. Wow. Absolutely not. I want to hear about the orphanage. How's things going with the kids before we end? And I'm hearing good things. One is about to head to the university. That's awesome. Yes, and Jennifer. I can even say her name now. Jennifer. I'm so proud of her. She wants to be an architect. Wow. She wants to be an architect. Um, so she'll be starting college soon. Um, she is the first one that I know from the orphans to go to college. I've known other um, girls and one guy who left, but you know they basically you know just wanted to get jobs or unfortunately went back into situations that they had worse in the, than the orphanage. But um, Jennifer wants to go to college, you know, and I and I got together with another brother uh, last year. Another, well, actually, another brother and some of the people from his um, mosque, and we said we're gonna we'll raise the money to make sure everything that she goes to school, but. There was somebody, I guess, involved with the orphanage who said, listen, I got it. He's going to be the benefactor. And for whatever reason, you know, could have been something happened or whatever. They stopped. They bowed out. And so they got in contact with me. And I told her, listen, don't worry about it. Don't put no plans on hold. She will have the money to go to college. She it's will have the money to go to college. So I'm going to be asking my telemade dream makers to right. let's help somebody else dream. And I will match every dollar up to twenty, up to twenty five hundred dollars. So it's going to happen. Put my money with my. Oh, it's going to happen. It's absolutely it's going to happen. happen. It's going to happen if I have to pay that thing by myself. It will happen. It will. That's happen. what's up. It will happen. You know, because I know if once I see her graduate and start doing great things, to be a part of changing someone's life is probably the best present you can give yourself not even to them it's mm -hmm. one of the best presents you can give yourself to know that man this this child could have been out there on the street been involved with that you you know what goes on it's so she could have went out there went straight there but instead you know she's building she, she's building buildings you know she she's putting her staple on life and to think that you had a part of that Man, that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. So, like I said, I could pay the whole thing myself, but I want it, but I know other people want to get involved. So that's why I'm calling my my telemate dream makers. We're gonna make her dream come true. We're going to make her dream come true. So yeah. So anybody want to uh, you know uh, donate to the cause, you know, I, I've had a GoFundMe for years, you know, we keep it at that same one. Or if somebody wants to send me something directly, whatever, however they want to do it, we'll work it out. But yeah, but um, whatever it is, five, 10, 15, um, we just need, I'm just trying to raise this $5,000. Like I said, 2,500 really, because I put 2,500 up, I'll match every dollar for a dollar up to $2,500. And yes. if we raise anything over it, then we'll take that money and we'll use it for next year. That way, let's say we go, over, let's say we if we go to 7,000, well, then we could take two thousand, and then we'll move it to next year. But I know it's five thousand. Somebody told me it might be a little less, like forty eight hundred, forty seven hundred. I don't know. But like I said, whatever monies we have, and uh, we're also going to start her an account, and I'll be doing interviews with her because she can show her face. She's now an adult, you know. Like I don't never yeah. show kids faces for so many reasons. True. But we could talk to her one on one. And she get, you know, let people know how she's doing. And I'm just so proud of her. I'm just like, you know, Papa Bear proud. Papa Bear. <laughs> I've been knowing her since she was 12. 
Wow. So, That's and, awesome. Hey, yeah, I told her yeah, do not let her get discouraged. You tell her that I said she will be going to college. That's what's up, man. The kids we assist, that's the biggest gift you give to yourself. Like for me, Russ, I don't really Absolutely. care what people do, but there is certain things in life you should take seriously. And I, I want to say, Russ, mm -hmm. above all things, that is what I love about you. Your humanitarian side, you remain grounded there. And I mean, you forever blessed for that, you know, no matter what, we're going to have haters, but I feel more YouTubers, especially big YouTubers that have a voice, they should use their voice to make uh, a difference in these countries that they visit in any way that they can. And you continue to do that. You continue to do that very good. That's a blessing because when I go in meetings, I'm talking to the kids like that day, I feel like I may pass out. Because imagine some of these kids like you, been, I've been knowing them since they're like four or five, and to see them actually stay focused. As I tell them, by the time you get to the university, you've done so much more than I did for you. All I did was beg the world for that yearly tuition, but it takes you to invest in yourself and make yourself in education a priority to go through school, learn, pass, and that is one of the biggest gifts is um, living outside of yourself and making a difference in this world. Even if you touch one life, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> some people don't do anything. So that's a blessing. Yeah. Well, I, well, I, I got no choice in the matter because uh, between <clears throat> my, my mother's spirit, and even my, my oldest daughter, Solange Spirit, because Solange, she was about helping um, helping people out. And uh, I get touched, I get touched when I say that because you know, like my daughter, Solange, had um, sickle cell anemia. There was a young lady on her block that also had sickle cell anemia that I knew nothing about to like two years after my daughter passed away. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I and I think this what may have caused been a part of the cause of her death was she was sharing her medication, which I did not understand um, because all my daughter had to do was ask me, you know, dad, can you help me help this other young lady out? And mm -hmm. when I looked at my daughter's account, my daughter, when I got paid, my daughter got paid. You know, my daughter had a, a, a ATM card, from one of my banks. And, and she had a certain amount of money because after she turned 18, you know, I just tell her when you need money, just go in there and get it. And my daughter had money in her account, you know, uh, but she was actually sharing her medications. I guess she thought, you know, she didn't need the dosage, whatever that she was. And, and um, it, it's and she was, you know, so I had a long talk with actually my daughter's mother boyfriend, who is actually a good friend of mine. And he and like I said, two two years after my daughter's death, you know, he sat down mm -hmm. and uh, he said, Man, "I just want to share this with you because I think you need to know. I didn't want to tell you before." And I'm telling you, I was just in tears at the end of that conversation, you know, because mm -hmm. I never knew this stuff, you know. And I thought, and, I, and of course, I'm thinking, "Man, maybe she would still be living or whatever." But um, I'm saying all this to say that my daughter's heart was um, so big mm -hmm. and she wanted to help so much that she even sacrificed, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, and giving and, and being in and giving in and being in with her spirit, I have to do this. You know, I absolutely have to do this. That's why I was glad when uh, I found the orphanage because when I found the orphanage, orphanage, especially after my daughter's death, and when I was able to go and get those hugs from those kids and those smiles and kids jumping all over me. And, oh, man, I can't tell you how much that helped heal me. That helped heal me. I can't even tell you how much that helped heal me. All right. So we got enough, we got a brother now says rap star mm -hmm. seven. He says for the uh, well, I appreciate you, brothers. No, we got a hundred because, like I said, I'm gonna match a dollar for dollar up to twenty five hundred dollars. So yeah, uh, I appreciate that. That will go towards the cause. 
I appreciate you, appreciate you, appreciate you, appreciate you. But yeah, but I, I have to do it, you know. And like I said, now, you know, to see the first one, oh man, go to college. Listen, I told her, that I told them, don't put nothing on hold. She will go. She and will it, go. It, uh, you know, I, Russ, it'll inspire the other kids too. When they see that you standing up mm -hmm. with the with one is going now. If they were wanting to give up, then they they're gonna continue because you know they'll be like, well, if he could do it for you know, they're just we must help these kids to get out of the situation that they're in so that they can know, like in Haiti, just because you're a young lady, prostitution is not the only thing you could do. And a lot of them are very, very smart young men and young women. It is because they do not have a voice. They don't have somebody like me or you they can run into in the streets and ask to be put in school. One of the reasons why I started sponsoring a child program, we did a giveaway, Russ, and when I went back to watch this video, I'm like, wow, this little girl wanted to tell me something. But in the process of me giving mm. food out, I'm wanting to know, it touched me so much. I went back looking for her. And I'm on live, you know, like we're going back, guys, look for her. And on live, at the beginning of the channel, this young lady mentioned she wanted to go to school. What was even more touching she told me she was 14 years old. The age she gave to myself yeah. in the audience did not match her looks. She looked and acted like a seven-year-old. She didn't know her age and had not wow. spent six months in a classroom. Broke me. She knew that her situation was not good. So when we give these kids an opportunity you really, really change a life, if not a community, because now it's a choice. Because you can be a great father, great mom, and you do everything, and we still end up a certain way. But you can give them a chance, you know. And a lot of the times, those that will appreciate it is the one that don't have access. So big ups, keep pushing. <laughs> I love I, you know, that's my line. Mm -hmm. Now, and that that is so true. The ones that <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you, I, I I know people with children, and I I've heard the one probably the most like un incredible thing. Um, I heard a woman once say uh, that you know she had two daughters. She said, Russell, I wish I never had children. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm like, huh? You know, I lost two children. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I can't, um, I mean, that, to, for a parent to say that, for you to birth a child and say, I wish I never had. But then you give to a child who, no blood, just pure love, and they take care of you like and respond to you like you're the greatest <laughs> thing in in the world you know so it it's um you know i use anyway, girl, let listen. me give you an example you got, before um, we go i'll give you a quick example russ um if you guys seven. don't follow me then you may not know this but i, I am a young lady that was raised by my father my mother dropped me off early on, baby crawling. And um, I remember all the struggle I went through with my dad. When it became time where I got in trouble and I was about to be returned, it has always been something that I wanted is to meet my biological mother. Anyway, make a long story short, I come into Haiti, meet her, yada, yada. But to today, the one that she didn't do for is the one that she can depend on. And I'm amazed at how my siblings, who my mother have poured all her strength into, are so ungrateful. They do not appreciate her. And me, that got to meet my mother at 36, love and admire her. 
And I'm always praying, like, I need to go viral so I can build her a house with my own money, <laughs> you know, with my own, not doing a project, but actually something that I worked hard and earned and saying, here, mom, to see that in her old days, she doesn't suffer. She doesn't, she's comfortable. So a lot of the times I understand what you're saying. Sometimes we're so busy investing just within ourselves, but that just may not be where the blessing comes from. So that's why I said we should mm -hmm. sometimes be focused on just one thing. It is okay to do things for others. And a lot of the 100%, it's always better when it's for a stranger. They appreciate it a lot more. A lot more mm -hmm. than those that you think yeah. would. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. Um, like I said, um, I, I think that's one of the, the greatest blessings. Um, and I'm going to tell you, when they just told me she was going to college, my, ah, I can't even tell you how proud and happy mm -hmm. I am. But, um, Listen, if anybody's in DR, March 9th, March 18th, that's a Saturday, uh, we're doing a block party in Porta Plata. There's a, there, there's a section in Porta Plata that I live in, and people get DM me on, on my um, Instagram if you're going to be in DR that day, because uh, I don't want to put it out over the air. But... Um, you know, it, there's so many of us expats in this, in this, in this, um, in these buildings that we say, you know, we're gonna take over. We just so we're gonna do an old school block party March 18th. We're gonna have some fun. Like I said, it's it's gonna be old school Brooklyn. We're going back to Brooklyn. Okay, we're doing this block. Party. Taking it to the street. So, uh, I'm looking forward to getting back. Take it to the streets. I'm looking forward to getting back to the DR. Seeing my expat family. Definitely seeing my brother. My brother gets on my nerve. I, I curse somebody, curse me out. But uh, that's my brother for life. And my brother Clarence is not my brother by blood. My brother by blood, I haven't talked to him in probably seven years, eight years. I have no desire. Wish him no bad. I have no animosity. It's just that we pretty much said everything we got to say to each other in life. But my brother Clarence, you know, um, and like I said, we don't always agree. I have cussed him, called him every mother, son, mm -hmm. under the sun. And he's done the same to me. But I know anytime I can count on that brother. And he knows anytime he can count on me. Like I said, this, listen, when I thought I was dying, when I had COVID, I got so scared. I called the brother, gave him all my access codes, everything. I said, just get to my phone, blah, blah, blah. I told him everything. Mm. And uh, I haven't changed one thing. I haven't changed nothing. I go in my accounts every dime still there. My brother still got access to it because you know now with my daughter being in the DR and he's there, so I need to make sure that if something happens, he can make he can get to her before I can get to it. So I'm gonna tell you, you know, so don't always think that your family by blood is the is the closest thing to you. My daughter um, that I uh, adopted, my daughter Solange, you know, along with my daughter Amber, I don't love them any, any, any more. I love them differently because, you know, um, Solange had a special, you know, you know, medical conditions and stuff. So, you know, it was just a little more tender, um, always being scared of what can happen and, until, you know, the eventual happen. But I love them. Uh, differently, but I don't love my daughter Amber any more than I love my daughter Solange. No more. And at first I thought I was, I, I actually called one of my friends, female friends, and asked, I said, you know, I feel bad. She said, why? I said, uh, I said, you know, my daughter Solange said, you know, she said, yeah. She said, the daughter you adopt. I said, yeah. I said, well, you know, I love my daughter Amber, but why don't I feel like I love her more? And she started laughing. I th I'm thinking, man, you know, I'm a bad father, <laughs> you know? And she said, Russell, just love them. You love your kids equally. She said, that's what you know 
you truly loved your daughter. She said, stop tripping. She said, you good. She's tripping. But I honestly was tripping over it. I really did. I honestly was tripping over it. But uh, It's genuine. <laughs> you, you assume the responsibility. You know, you understand the assignment. Because once you adopt a child, that child is your child. That's the assignment. Sure. And, you know, you should not have lesser love for one or the other, you know? And of course, you get, yeah. you are going yeah. to love them differently. You got to, because they're different people. But I always say, listen, love makes you family. Mm -hmm. Blood makes us related. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But love makes you family. Yep. All right, baby, well, you got anything else? Because I know we almost on here two hours, girl. But I'm telling you, talking to you is mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. such a, a great I didn't even get to my comments. I got to my super chats. Um, but just, I mean, just the conversation with you has been so good. I got to yes. rechange the title of this, this vlog again. But thank you so much. And I'm so happy that you are in great spirits. You look, girl, you looking good. I swear you're looking younger every time I see you. Oh, thank you. I know things might not be going right today. But I swear, girl, you look better and better every damn time Thank I you. see Miss Marie. It's attitude. Oh, if you have not checked out Haiti, please go to her channel, Life in Haiti with Marie, and Thank show you. this woman some love, subscribe, like, make sure that you become a Life in Haiti uh, fan like I am. Thank so if you, you. want to know what's happening in Haiti, you want to go on the ground, this is my resource. This, I don't go to CNN when I want to know what's happening in Haiti. I call Marie to find yes. out what's happening in Haiti. <laughs> make, make sure y'all show us some love. Go to the channel. The subscribing is not going to it's not going to cost you a dime. Just show Thank some you. love. Show some love to a person who gives a whole lot of love out. It's all Thank about so attitude, Ray. Any last words? Attitude. Um, mm. Attitude to everything, guys. And as I have written be you everything everyone else is taken one of the things i'm realizing more and more in haiti is appreciating life um every day is so much pressure that you can kill yourself by hiding and this and that but me as i always do with everything else i face in my life i have this attitude everything attached to me when i refuse to live in fear I'm not going to kill myself while I'm alive. I am going to live and I'm going to be thankful for every day I go out and come back in and I'm alive. Every morning that I wake up, then I I'm, I thank God for that. So I think that's how I'm able to be in Haiti and actually look how I'm looking. And then I am appreciating my health. I feel so, so much better than what I did last year, guys, because last year I was going through medical things. I didn't even know what was going on with me. I wasn't sharing it. I was just dealing with it until I just could not deal with it anymore. And I've taken care of that. I'm healing, of course, but I feel so much better. And that's all the reason why I should be thankful. <laughs> Hopefully it be wedding bells soon too. So I don't know. Wow. <laughs> off the market. Get out know. of here. <laughs> I don't know. I tell you, Russ. Well, yeah, let me let me know, girl. Let me know. Wow. I will. Wow. That is an announcement. I don't know. Well, I, listen, it's not I, an I, announcement, I, but I don't know. It's some things in store. I, I don't I'm not announcing anything, but of course, that is my ultimate well, if he's goal. Smart, you know, yeah, well, true. If he's smart, he'll take you off the market. If he's smart, he's gonna take you off the market. Baby. If he's smart, okay. if he's smart. Well, but let's let's just let's just go there for a second. So, if he takes you off the market, are you gonna stay in Haiti, or do you think you'd be living somewhere else? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. All right. I ain't gonna ask no more questions. We ain't gonna dip. I, I, I'm gonna ask you offline. I'm gonna ask you offline. Yeah, we're gonna have okay. a conversation about this. <laughs> but listen, okay. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate the chat. I appreciate those who go to life in Haiti. 
Miss <laughs> Marie and subscribe to her channel. Thank you, Chapel Pie TV. Uh, my sponsor of the day, my sponsor of this program, Rap Star 7. Thank you again um, for the donation um, to, to uh, Jennifer um, and helping her go to the university. When I get back to uh, DR, I'm going to range where and, and her she can speak a little bit of English. I'm, I'm going to press her even more. I'm going to get that daddy on. I'm going to press her more. I'm going to make sure that she's taking English lessons on a regular basis now. Um, but we're going to do an interview with her. Uh, with Y'all can ask her questions and, um, and, and just follow her dream. Follow her story. You know, so we're going to do that, man, because I, I, I think people who are investing in people's lives deserve to know what's happening with it. And who knows? You know, I get her speaking then that she may she may do her own YouTube story and tell her and tell her own, you know, her own path and her own story. Yeah. I'm just so happy. But uh, that's what we're going to do when we get to uh, DR. Like I said, she's 18 now. She's an adult. She's a young lady. But uh, don't you thirsty brothers come on disrespect. And remember, she's like she's like my one of my babies, she's like one yeah. of my babies. Watch your mouth and your comments when, when I put her on there because she's a gorgeous young lady. She's a gorgeous young lady. So uh, I'm going to say that. We're going to put that to them. But thank you again, Miss Marie. Appreciate thank everybody you. in the chat. Uh, appreciate I'll my be, sponsor today. I'm going to be Rapp. waiting on the chat to tell us the difference in your experience in Thailand versus Dominican Republic. Just as I was watching Zoom to Thailand the other day, him and Dre, um, Thailand and uh, Colombia. So I'm going to be waiting on Thailand and Dominican Republic from you. I'm well, sure I'll say this one thing too. about that. Well, this, I'm going to say this about Dominican Republic. So I'm, so, so this, this is where Dominican Republic gets a serious plus, And I'm going to end the program after this. In Dominican Republic, you can actually build generational wealth. A little harder to do in Thailand if you're a foreigner. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you cannot own land. You cannot own land. If you buy, let's say if I buy a condo, um, mm -hmm. I'm if unless I buy it with a business, and a lot of times somebody else's business, and they own 51% of the business, but they'll write an affidavit basically saying, I don't want no parts of it. It's hard to build wealth, generational wealth, when you don't own anything. And the DR... The mm -hmm. land that I own, my daughter own it. The condo that I own, my daughter will own it. You yeah. can't do that in a lot of Southeast Asian countries. I know you can't mm -hmm. do it here in Thailand. You can't in uh, Philippines. I don't, and I, I don't. I'm not sure about Indonesia or not. But that's the one great thing I would say about um, Dominican Republic. But once you own the land, you, you can straight out buy the land with the business. Your business, you can straight out buy the land as an individual. Wow. Thailand does not offer you that. Now, mm -hmm. Thailand offers you a whole lot of other stuff. But like I said, me thinking long term with my daughter, I want to put her in a, in a position where we could build that generation of wealth. And that's mm -hmm. why a lot of that's where uh, I did a show on Dominican Republic a while back. Where where was all this new wealth coming from? Because now you're starting to see all these cars. I'm sure you've seen the Bentley. I've seen everything from Bentley yeah. to Ferraris to everything else. Mm -hmm. and, and Dominican Republic it came from the families owning all this land, and now they're selling off because I'm sure you also know there's a lot of construction going on throughout Dominican Republic. But they were able to do that because now that new generation is selling off the land that created the wealth, but the only problem is, like you pointed out something earlier, education. Mm -hmm. You know, and what I see Dominicans doing, especially young Dominicans, yeah, you, the, they starting to sell off the land and everything and helping out the family. But if you don't have education in five years, you're going to be broke. So in five least, years, I'll be able to get, I'll be able to get a whole lot of new cars for a very cheap price because they're going to need the money to support that lifestyle that mm -hmm. they blew. That they three generations saved to make sure that they could be in the position where they they, they are now, and I and, and they do the same thing that blacks do in the states. You buy mm -hmm. all that shit, but you don't educate yourself. You don't spend no money here. 
spend it all on here nothing here so and, and i say like i say in five years they'll be able to get some stuff real cheap don't worry about it mm -hmm. all right um so i love it so hold on, i gotta read my boy deacon earn money says um i love dominican republic all right he says been here for three years the culture embraced me and i embraced the culture uh, own property yep that's what i was talking about own property and barbershop here banana plantation yeah i mean you get you know it's easier to own business it's easier to create generational wealth in dominican republic than it is in thailand mm -hmm. as a foreigner i ain't saying you can't do it because there are evidently people that have done it here in thailand but i'm saying the process is a little bit harder and a lot different so uh, I got to give Dominican Republic that. I know Richie Mack going to hear about this and we'll be fighting again. But thank you, Mr. Ray. I appreciate you, baby. Thank you got to go ahead and smile. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, hey, send me, uh, send me, send me one of your beautiful photos. So when I do this thumbnail for this, uh, for this particular vlog, I can feature my friend because I'm about to go in here change the title and everything up. Thank you so much, baby. Taylor made green family. I Thank you. Absolutely. Anytime. Uh Taylor made dream makers. I'm gonna be a part of St. Jennifer to college. Uh, we're gonna do a whole show about that next when I get back to DR. Appreciate you, appreciate you, appreciate you. Take care, Marie. Hold on for a second as I say goodbye to the Taylor okay, made okay. green family. Adios, fam. Adios.